Day Kratos, I'm Tino Sonicus and as part of the Boost series we're going to prepare and identify two esters. Um, the reaction between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol is known as esterification. So we need a catalyst to speed this up and what is a catalyst? A catalyst speeds up a chemical reaction without being consumed by the reaction. It increases the reaction rate by lowering the activation energy. The aim of this um, experiment or practical is to prepare and identify two esters. So let's start. For this experiment, we're going to need the following materials. On my left hand side, I've got a hot plate set at 60 degrees Celsius with a glass beaker and water to serve as my hot water bath. Um, I've started off with this because it's important because we always tend to forget to set that at a temperature and then when we need it, it's not ready for you. So it gives us time to get ready for that. Um, I've got a test tube holder and inside the test tube holder, I've got two test tubes in there. Each test tube is already labeled A and B um, so that I can know which test tube um, is going to be which ester. I've got two glass beakers, 150 more glass beakers, and in each beaker there's 30, 30 milliliters of cold water. Then I've got a bunch of um, pipettes. Next step is we're going to take some glass beads um, and add it to my test tubes. So I'm just going to grab a spatula full of glass beads and I can just uh, gently add it to the test tube. And I can do the same for test tube B. Okay. Take my acetic acid, my pipette, and the pipette pump. The pipette pump will allow us to suck up the uh, ethanoic acid. I'm just going to go down so I can see my meniscus. And my meniscus is on 4 milliliters. I'm going to move over and I'm just going to eject it into the test tube. And then I'm going to repeat this for test tube B. Just going to see where it is. And going to eject it into test tube B. So basically for this ester is we're going to keep the carboxylic acids the same and we're going to change the alcohols for these esters. So for ester A, we see we're going to add methanol. Um, let's just take this and put this back. Okay, we put that back over there. And I'm going to grab my methanol and I'm going to grab a 5 mol ball pipette. So you're lucky, as you can see, I needed 5 mol, so I selected a 5 mol pipette for that. And same thing, insert. Just see where my meniscus is. I've got five milliliters there. I'm gonna add it to test tube A. So I'm gonna take the pentanol um, for my S to B. So I'm selecting the the five mole ball pipette again. Grab the proper pentanol and just suck it up quickly. Add it to test tube B and just give each of these a little bit of a gentle mix. And then we need to add the catalyst to each of those test tubes. For that, I'm going to put on my safety goggles and I'm going to grab some, um, some gloves. So the next step in our method is to slowly add two milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid to test tube A and B. 
okay, and get my concentrated sulfuric acid. Um, I'm got a small glass beaker over here that I'm just going to add my two milliliters in there because this um, is not sl I can't add it slowly enough um, that way. Okay, two milliliters. I'll just add it to test tube to the glass beaker. There's something about concentrated sulfuric acid. It's quite vis viscous, so it takes a while to get out of the, the pipette. I'm going to grab my posterior pipette, um, get some of this two milliliter over here, and I'm just going to slowly drop it into the to test tube A. Grab the other half. And slowly going to add it to there. And the last little bit. I can already see, starting to see that the, the reaction is starting to take place. And if you touch this, you'll feel like it's being uh, it's getting nice and warm, so that's the, and as you can see there, you'll see the bottles will start to form. Okay, so just let's repeat this quickly. Two milliliters. Two milliliters. We just repeat this process. And I'm just going to take this and put it to the side. Repeat the process by slowly adding my catalyst to this tube B. I have to repeat this one more, once more. And the last little bit of concentrated sulfuric acid. That will bring my volume that I added to two milliliters. Okay, I'm going to take this and I was just going to move it to the side. Okay, just give it a nice shake, a gentle shake with it, and to repeat that with Esther A as well. Okay, I'm just going to grab some tissue paper. Um, it's already, already been rolled up for me, and I'm going to take some just a little bit of water and just wet it. Okay, so I'm just going to grab these and going to wrap it around the top of the test tube. Give it another shake. Going to grab the elastic band and just to secure it to the top over there. And I'm going to place it into my hot water bath. And I'm going to repeat the process with um, S to B. Oof, these things are nice and warm and just secure it with that and i'm going to place it into my hot water bath and inside there we're going to leave it for about 10 minutes um, so the reaction can complete over there and from there we're going to go and do the next step great 12s 10 minutes is up so let's cool down our ester so i'm going to take ester a I've already labeled my glass beaker A, so I'm going to place Esther A into S the gl that, that glass beaker, and I'm going to repeat the process for Esther B. I'm just going to put them a little bit in cold water so that they cool down a bit. While we're waiting for them to cool down, let's talk about the tissue paper. The tissue paper, why did we put place the tissue paper under? Remember, esters are quite volatile, and the tissue paper will just cool down that surface and on top and when the, when the ester evaporates that will heat that cold surface and when a gas heats a cold surface what happens? Um, condensation. So it will form and flow back into my test tube. Then you will see when we pour out my esters um, into the water because that's basically the next step you will see um, the glass beads coming with that. So you can just pour everything in there and so, so the roll that glass beads in there 
um, was in to enlarge the surface area. Um, especially if you work with a small test tube, you'll find that this reaction, and that's why I had to put that sulfuric acid very slowly in there. As the smaller your surface area, the uh, more reactive this reaction becomes. So that glass bead just is there, um, is there to serve uh, or to enlarge my surface area, making my reaction less um, explosive um, and so on. Okay, so then I'm going to take this. As you can see, it's just water, nice and clean and clear. Uh, nothing floating on top. I'm going to just take this and I'm going to pour my ester inside there with all the glass beads. Just going to place that back in there so it's out of the way. And you'll see that if we leave it there, that there is going to be a layer forming on top of that ester. So let's take, repeat the process for ester B. I'm going to take it, I'm just going to pour everything into the water and you will see that there is a layer forming. Okay, the water, why a little bit of water? Well, we use it to cool it down, but it also will enhance the ester. So you can smell it much better and so on. So you like this and you just waft it closer, you don't never take your nose and shove it into the beaker. You will smell that ester A smells like glue. So I got a tube of glue from home. Go walk around the house, go look for a uh, tube of glue, and you will be able to smell it, and you will smell that it's got a very similar smell to the glue. Then I also bought for Esther B a banana, because this definitely smells like a banana. If you don't know how to a banana smells like, just grab one, especially an overripe banana. Okay, this one's a little bit green still. A nice overripe banana, and that will give you the smell of ester B. So you can go and compare what I'm smelling to what the, the actual ester is smelling. Okay, now we spoke about ester A and we spoke about ester B. What is ester A and what is ester B? Okay. We can't identify an ester just on smell, okay? Because if I never smelled a banana or, or you never smelled a banana in your life, how can you tell me something smells like a banana if you never smelled it? Same with the glue, okay? So we look at the alcohol, okay? So I use methanol and I use pentanol for, so methanol for ester A and pentanol for ester B. Um, so for the naming part, the ester name has got two components to that. An alcohol, the, the first part is, the, is part of from the alcohol, and the second part is from the carboxylic acid. So the alcohol we saw is methanol and pentanol. So for ester A, that will be a methyl, and then for pentanol, that will be a pentyl, okay? Because it's the number of carbons we're looking at. The carboxylic acid, we kept the same, ethanoic acid, so that becomes ethanoate. So ester A is going to be methyl ethanoate, and ester B is going to be pentyl ethanoate. So we don't go and identify an ester by its smell, but by looking at what alcohol and what carboxylic acid we used. So for conclusion, ester A is methyl ethanoate, Ester B is um, pentyl ethanoate. Um, we just don't identify it, just again, we don't identify it on smell, but by looking at the name. In general, esters got lovely aromas, um, smelling like different fruits, different chemicals, um, ether, etc. that you have. So different esters got a, a distinct aroma towards them. Um, You'll see when you pour it out into water, that's, that oily layer that forms on there, that's due to um, the um, ester being an organic molecule, organic molecules being less dense, and it floats on top of the water. So for conclusion, ester A, uh, the methyl ethanoate um, is over here, it smells like glue, and methyl uh, pentyl ethanoate and smells like a banana. And that, ladies and gents, brings me to the end of the practical demonstration. So, let's look at a possible exam question that you might get. This is from 
November 2018, paper 2, and question 2. So you'll see they give you the whole setup we've done. And they say, a test tube containing a straight chain organic acid X, ethanol and a catalyst is heated in a water bath as illustrated below. So they give you a hot water bath there with the test tube in there, um, the mixture of X plus C28505 and a catalyst, a tripod and a Bunsen burner. Um, then they say organic compound Y is produced according to the following equation. Um, and that's the equation for you. And question 2.1. Give a reason why the test tube is heated in a, hot in a water bath instead of over a flame. Duva. So alcohol is flammable or ethanol even is flammable. So we can't use an open flame to heat it up. Then try for question 2.2. They ask write down the following. 2.2.1, um, type of reaction that takes place here, and we'll see that it's an esterification um, reaction taking place over there. Then 2.2.2, the formula of the catalyst needed. Um, the catalyst is concentrated sulfuric acid, so the formula for that is H2SO4. 2.2.3, um, homologous series to which compound A belongs. Uh, it belongs to esters. So molecular mass of compound Y is 144 grams per mole, and its empirical formula is C4H8O. Um, the OS at 2.3 determine the molecular formula of compound Y, and for that we need to take um, the mass of the uh, mass of the ester and divide it by the empirical formula of C4H8O. And we'll see that as 144 divided by 72. Where do I get that 72 from? I go to my periodic table and I see that carbon's got an atomic mass of 12, hydrogen's got an atomic mass of 1, and oxygen's got an atomic mass of 16. So we've got 4 carbons, so that gives me 12 times 4, 8 hydrogens, and 1 oxygen molecule. So the total there is 72. So that 144 divided by 72 gives me an empirical, to empirical ratio of 2. We could take that ratio and we multiply it by the empirical formula um, to get our uh, molecular formula. And we will see that it's going to be C8H16O2. Then we can move on to question 2.4. Write down the UPAC, I, UPAC name for compound Y. And you'll see that this ether hexanoate. And then I ask at 2.5, write down the structural formula for organic acid X. And you'll see that is the um, structure for organic acid no, X. And ladies and gents, that brings us to the end of the application. Mm -hmm.